fisher trap known as a Samson Post deadfall. They can be used for martens, fisher, even minks, and other weasels. This variety uses a tree that's been felled. We're going to use a piece of the hinge. This was where the hinge was that you saw earlier when the tree came down. We're going to use that as a piece of the barrier. I split this section of wood off as well, which is part of the hinge. And it's made into two wedges. And one's going to go right in here. The other's going to go right in there. I'm going to tap those in with my axe just to make sure they're more secure. Like so. And that makes it harder for the animal to get in here except for this one spot right here. That spot is where we're going to put the bait as well as the trigger for the trap. Everything else is blocked off. Now this big tree that's come down is going to become the deadfall log. With that we need to section it make it smaller to actually fit between these areas. Because these are not just to keep the animal from escaping or getting into the bait easily. It's also to keep the log in line. We've made this log thin down so it fits between the guides as well as becomes more like a guillotine at the bottom. The trigger is made out of two pieces. First is the upright. This is all just made one from, uh, from one piece of dogwood. And both ends are rounded off. As well, they are burnished against a piece of wood that's very hard and dry. Or you can use the edge of your blade, not the edge of your blade, but the face of your blade, to round them off and make them really smooth. Where it meets the trigger, it has to be burnished as well down there and rounded. This makes it extremely sensitive and doesn't make it too rigid. As well, it makes it harder for water to collect there and freeze. The actual bait stick is not a spike, but a prong. And that's so that we can put frozen bait in there rather than having to deal with trying to drive it through that frozen uh, bait. This comes together very well. It's going to go on. So Rob's going to be helping me here. He's going to be lifting the log up because this is usually a two or three person job. They can get 20 or 30 of these made in a day, just groups of four or five people. So we've got the trigger baited. We've got a couple of chick, uh, chicken brass pieces from an MRE. We've uh, Rob's wiped some down on here to give some more smell. And there's some really strong odor coming from it. It's actually, uh, Rob's saying he felt guilty about the, this. But we're going to set the trap in there. I'm going to set that there. And I'm just going to slowly let him lower it. So this is the completed Samson Post deadfall. Down here we have the bait trigger. Here we have the ramp. The animal's going to come up. We've been smearing chicken all over it. Here's one of our wedges. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to leave this place alone. We're not going to come back into this area anymore. We're going to leave it alone, let the snow come down and try and wash away our scent, but leave the scent in here. The great thing about having a deadfall trap is the bait is underneath a log, therefore the smell is not going to get covered up by snow. Whereas out here, our evidence of being here is going to get completely covered with snow. What we're going to do now is come back and check it twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. Now, if we want real success, we would set down about another 20 or 30 of these things down through this forest. However, what we're going to be focusing on is grouse. We have a lot of snares to set up for grouse traps. This here is to make sure that no fishers are going to be taking our grouse. This is to try and catch the predator before it gets our prey.